We are kicking off today with SmackDown, and ever since SummerSlam, the big question on everybody's lips was why exactly did Jimmy Uso betray his brother? On this week's show, we got our answer, as SmackDown had a Hail to the Chief segment in which Roman Reigns basked in his victory in tribal combat. Despite reports of an injury suffered at SummerSlam, Reigns looked on top form on SmackDown and was willing to grant Jimmy whatever he wanted in gratitude to what happened in Detroit. Reigns' confidence quickly vanished when Jimmy revealed that he didn't betray Jay for Roman, and Jay would come out to find out exactly why things happened the way they did. After days of speculation, Jimmy finally explained that he betrayed Jay because he loves his brother more than anything and didn't want to lose his brother to the pressure of being the tribal chief. More specifically, Jimmy said he didn't want Jay to become an egotistical, manipulative asshole like Roman Reigns, leading to an asshole chant at Reigns by the audience. As Jimmy was leaving the arena though, Jay would lay out the bloodline, and when Jimmy went in for an embrace, the treacherous brother was also leveled with a super kick. Staring directly into the camera, Jay declared that he's out of the bloodline, he's out of SmackDown, and out of WWE, before leaving through the crowd. Now Jay's claim that he's out of WWE shouldn't be taken at face value, as it's practically guaranteed that his role in this storyline isn't over yet, especially given what his father Rikishi recently shared online. In a promotional image for an upcoming meet and greet, the image highlighted Rikishi's many accomplishments and said that fans can come and meet him before he referees at Payback next month. There's clearly no other match which would make more sense for Rikishi to officiate than Jimmy vs. Jay, which many have predicted would happen when Jimmy turned on his brother. The decision for Jimmy's heel turn at SummerSlam has received somewhat mixed reviews, and while WWE had the chance to undo it on this week's SmackDown by having Jay forgive his brother, that's not the direction they went with. So why, in kayfabe, does it make sense for Jay to leave WWE? Well, to answer that question, we have to turn the clock back three years right to the start of the bloodline. Ever since Roman Reigns' heel turn in 2020, Jay has been under the pressure to live up to the expectations thrust upon him, first as Reigns' challenger, and later as the right-hand man. Jay's emotional roller coaster continued last year during his issues with Sami Zayn, which would eventually be settled just in time for Sami to be exiled from the bloodline at the Royal Rumble. Flash forward to Night of Champions, where Jimmy was the one who kicked Roman Reigns, forcing Jay to pick a side for the Bloodline Civil War that would see the Usos defeat Reigns and Solo Sokoa in London. Throughout the three years, Jay at least had his brother Jimmy at his side, until SummerSlam, so in kayfabe, it's clear that the emotional strain of the past three years has finally overcome Jay Uso. With that said, Jay's role in this storyline is far from over. And what did you make of this segment and the Jimmy vs. Jay match? Make sure to leave your views in the comments down below. This week's SmackDown also saw the United States title on the line as Austin Theory was forced to defend the gold despite the best efforts of the cocky young superstar. By winning the US title Invitational, Santos Escobar earned his shot at the gold, but early into SmackDown, Escobar was attacked by Theory, who trapped his leg in a travel case. Despite this attack, Escobar would be cleared to wrestle, only to be jumped again during his entrance by Theory, who would go on to gloat in the ring about the title match not happening. Unfortunately for Theory though, Adam Pearce declared that a title match would take place, and it would instead be Rey Mysterio who got to challenge in Escobar's place. Not only did Rey compete, seemingly fully healed from his legitimate injury in the finals of the US title Invitational, he would also win the US gold, kicking off his third reign as champion. It was a truly shocking result that fans didn't see coming, and brings to an end the 250-day reign of Theory, which began back at Survivor Series War Games last November. Post-match, the LWO celebrated with a new US champion, including Escobar, but we can't help but wonder if Rey winning the title Escobar was due to challenge for could cause some issues in the group. Do you think an Escobar turn is in the works, or will the LWO remain a unit despite the circumstances of Rey's victory this week? Let us know down in the comments. More from SmackDown as we know that next week's show in Toronto will feature a celebration of 25 years of Edge, but the rated R superstar was also on this week's show. In a surprise appearance, Edge earned a thunderous ovation from the crowd in Calgary and said he wanted a match next week against none other than Sheamus. 
Edge would explain that it was during a 2019 appearance on Sheamus' Celtic Warrior Workouts YouTube channel that he'd feel more active than he had in years, which would encourage him to get back in the ring. In the ring, Sheamus said that if not for a conversation with Edge years ago, he'd likely not have made it to WWE and was more than happy to accept the challenge of the Hall of Famer. It was a refreshing change of pace from WWE's usual storytelling, as unlike so many feuds, Edge and Sheamus are clearly friends and want to bring out the best of each other on next week's show. Sheamus vs. Edge will no doubt be a great match, which could lead to even more matches between the two, and we'll have to see who stands tall in Toronto next week. If you were watching this week's SmackDown, you'll have noticed that the show sounded much different, as this week marked the debut of SmackDown's newest announced team. This team consists of Kevin Patrick, Corey Graves, and Michael Cole, and despite being a 26-year veteran of WWE, it wasn't Cole who was calling the shots. Instead, it was Patrick who was clearly the lead announcer for the broadcast, which follows reports that WWE are very high on the Irish commentator and see big things in his future. The recent commentary shakeup was done in order for Patrick to learn from Cole and Graves, and do you think the new commentary team worked this week? Let us know in the comments. SmackDown also saw Charlotte Flair face Asuka in the opening match, but it wasn't long before Damage Control made their presence felt. Interestingly, Dakota Kai was with Io Sky and Bayley despite her injury, and the group wasted no time in making the Flair vs. Asuka match a no contest. Io Sky was especially happy to carry her newly won WWE Women's Championship with her during this segment, and now has her own Champion of the Sky t-shirt on WWEshop.com. Given what happened, it appears Sky is preparing to defend against both Charlotte and Asuka, as the new Women's Champion will seemingly be a fighting champion from here on. It has been over a year since Karrion Cross returned to WWE, and despite high expectations at the start, his run hasn't exactly set the world on fire. For months now, Cross has been feuding with AJ Styles and rarely gets one over on the Phenomenal One, but a video promo this week teased that a change may be coming for the former NXT Champion. The video used some interesting imagery throughout, and ended with the line that a prophet is nothing without his disciples, possibly teasing a faction for Cross and Scarlet. For all his talk of disciples, though, no new members came to Cross's aid in the ring, as after Meacham disposed of Scarlet at ringside, Styles got another win over his rival. After the match, however, Cross could be seen laughing in the ring, another indication that WWE has something planned for him, but we'll just have to wait and see if a new faction is coming. And we're ending today with L.A. Knight, who was once again over as can be on SmackDown and picked up a comfortable victory over Top Dalla. It's interesting that Knight was on this week's SmackDown given that he started a feud with The Miz on Raw, though this bodes well for how WWE sees him as a star not confinable to just one brand. This marked WWE's first time in Calgary since Knight has really come into his own, and given the amount of yeah shirts in the crowd, it was clear that the fans wanted to see him. After his match, Knight spoke about The Miz and their feud on Raw, and made it clear that their issues are far from over, so don't be surprised if we see Knight on the red brand next week. Miz labeled Knight as an Attitude Era fanboy on Raw, a nod to the comparisons of Knight to The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, and what did you make of his brief appearance on SmackDown this week? 